Bankhill was probably the best race that we've ever been to. Yeah, and um, we could potentially do a whole episode on that. Yeah, tour of Baton Kill. Um, for that, and for those that don't know it, Baton Kill was, um, if they've ever seen the Clint Eastwood film, The Bridges, and, Bridges of Madison County, where the, uh, Clint Eastwood's taking pictures of all these like bridges that um, cross rivers over there on these. Um, the dirt roads that have been hammered down, uh, but they've not got a top layer of tarmac on them. There might have been a very um, a thin layer of tarmac laid over them that has been just rolled over once or twice, basically. But because the country is so big, you know, these roads are, uh, are made like this. Just to reiterate, this is 2010. The word gravel. Nope. <laughs> <clears throat> Never been mentioned that word, but... Um, Rafa were adamant that they wanted us to do this race. Their presence in America was very, very big, in particular in uh, New York. And um, they'd set this um, they'd set this race up for us. They wanted us to do, and we were, you know, we were game to do it, obviously. And um, however, the itinerary that they wanted the team to do, I was totally against it, and thought that uh, it was too much for the riders. Uh, we literally flew in and we got into New York um, quite late. Um, and then straight away the next morning, they wanted us to do a ride with um, a number of the Rafa supporters, um, which was something like yes, something like five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, we got in really, really late. The riders were having to get up after jet lag with, you know, very, very early in the morning. And, I came down, I wasn't going on this because they were, they were basically riding from the hotel. On the upside, Rafa had put us up in one of the best hotels in New York. They put us up in the Ace Hotel, which for those that, uh, you know, look it up, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool, hip, trendy hotel. So a bunch of yahoos like who just arriving there in New York to get into this like really cool hotel. It was like everyone was starry eyed. So that, in that respect, it was fantastic. Yeah, um, but we had to get up really, really early in the morning. I decided that I'd get up, see the boys off to make sure they all turned up sort of thing. So there they were. They all came down blurry-eyed and off they went. I actually then stayed up thinking I'm going to have to, you know, this, this, these sort of, uh, you know, mass participation rides with like these um, sponsors of the team or uh, not just the sponsors, but the supporters of the team, you know, Riders don't always like them, and, and um, excuse me, <laughs> that's my TV coming on. Um, they uh, so I, I got up, stayed up, waited for them to come back, and they were back by I don't know, probably about eight o'clock in the morning. To a man, they were saying to me that was the best bike ride they had ever been on, basically. And it seems you can you can ride New York in the early hours of the morning. Basically, you can see virtually every um, you know, every iconic building that you would see on a trip in New York on your bike. They saw the lot in the morning uh, on, on this ride and had a you know had an absolutely fantastic time. So my fears were completely unfounded. The riders, to a man, said it was the most you know fun, most best experience ever. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was great. We then had a, a dinner that we that we went to that was in the in the hotel with um, these supporters had paid to, to be able to eat with the team sort of thing as well, which was good. We had interviews lined up for them as well, which was um, yeah, it, it kind of um, it was for me. It was all detracting away from the race itself, but from satisfying what the sponsors want. It taught me a lot that I did, I think, that trip in terms of it. Almost that aspect of it was more important than the race itself. I guess it comes back to that thing of, like, like you said earlier on, you know, if you, you don't sponsor a cycling team, yeah, true. expecting it to win. You know, you don't, yeah. you don't waste your investment on that point, from that point of view. Yeah. And Rafa knew that. Mm. They weren't necessarily sticking. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then Simon Mushroom came with us on that trip as well, and he was in the team car with us. And I, I remember abusing a commissary in the race, and I'm not quite sure he did. I mean, 
Simon is from Yorkshire, so I'm sure he has heard that sort of language before. But <laughs> I remember abusing this uh, yeah, commissaire because um, he wouldn't let us feed our rider in the last 20 k's of the race yet. He'd, um, yeah, he'd stop the team cars going forward. And by the time he allowed the team cars to go forward, it was past 20k to go sort of thing. And I was like, well, how could he be fed? He, he wouldn't let us go, you know. And I abused the guy and got the requisite fine for doing so. Um, but uh, yeah, Darren Lapham would have been in the break all day. And that was great for our supporters and our sponsors. Like, we didn't end up winning the race. But yeah, this, it's this basically Bayern kills the gravel race. It was on... Um, mixture of tarmac road and gravel roads as well and uh, it's a tough tough event it's um it struggled to stay on the calendar unfortunately but it deserves to be on the calendar it should, it should have a um, you know it's a shame that it can't get a, a more long-term sponsor it's a great little race however at the end of that race or during that race um what was it? Was it Etna? That I can't remember what, what <laughs> volcano it was that erupted. I think I still, I still think nobody to this day is quite sure, except for the Icelandics, how you pronounce the name of it. But it was an Icelandic. Uh, yeah. It was the ash cloud. So we had, yeah, we had the uh, uh, yeah we had the volcanic explosion in 2010, and as a result of that, all the um, yeah all the planes were banned from from flying, so we were stuck. BA cancelled our flight. Uh, we couldn't get back to the UK. Um, I had to phone the organiser of the tour of Brittany, so the Bretagne, and um, to say that we couldn't get back and the team wouldn't be riding the tour of Bretagne, which we should have been going to. And I had a massive argument with him. He didn't believe <laughs> that the you know the flights had been cancelled, and it was like I said, it's all over the news. You can't not know this. Like, and he, to this day, we've never been back to the race. He's uh, he took in he took umbrance at this, and um, and typical. I'm sure other people have experienced the same problems. If uh, you know these sort of mass flights are cancelled, then there's this sort of panic you know where you're staying what's happening we were literally due to go from one hotel to the airport we get to the airport before we get there we know our flight is cancelled you're going to be staying at this hotel at the airport we get to the airport hotel we're going to be staying where we have to stay for a number of days before we can um before we can fly and we're thinking okay fair enough we'll make the best of it we'll go out training you know whilst we're here can't train this, this, the way the hotel was placed, it was made for cars, basically. You were on, basically, yeah, you are on a motorway. There was no way out of the place without a car, basically. We didn't have any cars. So um, we had this problem. I'm not quite sure why maybe we'd stayed one extra day. But Sam and Mushroom had managed to get out, I think, but we couldn't get out at all. And... Um, Simon, I I'm, I'm, I'm presume tw Twitter started then. I can't remember how he did it, but he basically put a, he just put a message out to say, um, all you Rafa fans, the team is stuck in America. Can anyone help them out? They need somewhere to stay. So we, we were going to be stuck at this airport for probably four or five days um, until this um, ash cloud had dispersed and flights were, were resumed but then you've got the problem with all the, the backup of, of um, you know of customers of you know of other people that need to get back as well so he just put this message out and some guy came back to us and said yeah I've got this uh, I'm away you can use our house and we went oh okay fair enough so Simon Mosham got in touch okay lads I've got you a place to stay and you, you know <laughs> You always think the worst in these situations. Anyway, turns out we've got a place in the Hamptons. So we have to, we hire two vehicles and we, and we basically drive up to upstate New York to the Hamptons, basically. And we basically go into this guy's drive and we're like, what is, <laughs> what's going on here? This is like, <laughs> we're just a bit of hairy ass bike riders. You know, we shouldn't be staying here, you know. And uh, yeah, the key's in the barbecue. Uh, okay, so yeah, so sure enough, we got the guy's barbecue and the keys there in the barbecue for us. Get the key, let ourselves into his house, and we have the run of his house for the four or five days that we that we stayed there. Now, this house, we go into it, and um, well, I'm not the land. There's a lot of land to it. I mean, there wasn't like 25 bedrooms or anything like that. It's so the riders were still shit. House in his back garden or something. Well, that was just going to say. This, the the land was that big. He had canoes, so he went into his garage, and the first thing you see is a Porsche, 
with a roof rack on it. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so there's a portion, there's some other vintage car in there. And he's got canoes. And then it turns out within the grounds, he's got a lake where you can go canoeing. But the biggest deal was he'd got his own cyclocross course. <laughs> it within the you know within the land of, you know his own, his own garden basically and it wasn't a garden it was like you know it was farmers fields it was massive sort of thing you know, woods and all sorts we saw deer in there and yeah we had um we had a great a great time As, uh, to this day um you know we obviously thanked him and that at the time but i don't think we've ever met the guy i'm sure simon mushroom has but uh yeah the hospitality of the people that um um, yeah, were Rafa supporters showed no, you know, showed no ends there. It's like it was a very, very special trip, uh, and that was to be able to stay. You stayed in the Hamptons in upstate New York, and that, and uh, it meant that the boys could train. We missed going to Brittany, uh, as I say, we fell out with the organizer with that, and have actually never, never made up with him, um, unfortunately, which is a shame because that was a, it, it is, uh, you know, one of the best 2.2 races and for under 23s in particular. It's a really good event to do. So that's that was the downside of it. Um, do I think it was worth it? <laughs> Definitely. That was uh, probably the uh, you know one of the best trips ever to go to uh, to go to Baton Kill. I think most of the riders would say the same thing as well. That uh, obviously the ones that went um, you know, really really enjoyed it. It was uh, it was really really good. Cool. And you know I think that maybe that is a good place to wrap it up for this evening. Yeah. So probably yeah. Um, I'm sure I've overlooked to uh, to ask you about tire widths and stuff like that for riding on Baton Kill, which I'm probably <laughs> going to get people. Oh, tire widths, yeah. Well, there's no. <laughs> there's none of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't known as a gravel race then. It probably wouldn't even be known as a gravel race now, in fairness. But it certainly was. Uh, it was a little bit different. I think they were probably liking it a little bit more to Paris Bay, an you know, American version of Paris Bay. I think that's how they were trying to sell it at the time, but it wasn't. It was an unmade road. And I think depending on the weather basically, much the same as the we get with um the Seacle Classic here in the UK. If it's good weather then basically it's not a, you know the race is not much of a problem really. Um you get bad weather then a little bit more, you know a little bit trickier. But yeah. uh no, it's a good trip. Cool. Um so yeah, as I say, let's let's wrap it up there. We might uh, we might come back for a bit more of 2010 next time, but I think it's it's not necessarily a closed book.